All right, new tonight. Media outlets and news organizations, including this one, NBC News, are now demanding that House Speaker Kevin McCarthy give them the same access to the 44,000 hours of January 6 footage that he gave to host Fox host Tucker Carlson. Laura Hanman, the lawyer representing these outlets, said in a letter to McCarthy, quote, there is no basis for further delaying granting this access to these news organizations or any other media outlets that make similar requests. Kevin McCarthy gave exclusive access of this footage to Tucker Carlson, who spent the last two years downplaying the events of January 6, calling the insurrection a, quote, nonviolent election justice protest. He even produced a documentary suggesting the day's events were a false flag operation. But this goes beyond just conspiracies. There is real concern that capital security could be compromised if certain secure locations, including evacuation routes, are improperly released to the public. Here's what Congressman Jamie Raskin, a member of the January 6th committee, told my colleague Stephanie Rule. We have security concerns about turning over the location of security cameras in the U.S. Capitol that the police use. We have concern about the escape and evacuation routes that were used on that day. We don't want to just, you know, throw our hands up and say, well, let's just let everything go and let the insurrectionists have the materials that will allow them to plan the next January 6th. Here's one hypothesis why Kevin McCarthy gave the footage to Carlson and only Carlson. This was, in effect, an olive branch to one of his most high-profile skeptics. McCarthy's trying to appease the far right wing of his party, this time by effectively outsourcing a bid to reinvestigate the riot to his favorite cable news commentator. Because Kevin McCarthy, despite being speaker, is not the real power broker for a group of House Republicans. Remember, this is the same McCarthy who suffered through 15 humiliating rounds of voting before being elected speaker. And he only succeeded once he made concessions to the far right of his party. McCarthy became beholden to the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene and Jim Jordan and was forced to reward them with key committee assignments and more in exchange for their votes. It is easy to see how this deal with Carlson is a similar effort to win over a former critic. Kevin McCarthy has been speaker for a little over a month, and he's already given away so much power. You have to wonder if he still has, or if he ever had, any real power of his own. This is the point where we'd normally laugh at Kevin McCarthy and kind of joke. But it's hard to laugh when McCarthy has deliberately and recklessly put people's lives in danger. Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Jimmy Gomez of California. He is a member of the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, it's great to have you back on the show. Good to see you. Why do you think Kevin you. McCarthy is giving this footage only to Tucker Carlson and the folks at Fox? I, w I want everyone to be very clear what Kevin McCarthy and uh, the extreme MAGA Republicans are trying to do. They're trying to rewrite the history of the last two years during, uh, and of the Trump era to, so that they can have a different political narrative going into 2024 and win a larger majority. They do that on the House Oversight Committee, which I'm on, by having these cockamamie um, types of investigations that everybody knows are uh, based on conspiracy theories. Now he's handing over these tapes to Tucker Carlson so that, that Tucker can cherry pick the footage that he deems necessary to use the Fox uh, megaphone to basically say that January 6th was no big deal. It's much ado about nothing. And it was only because the Democrats and the liberal media are trying to manipulate you believing that the Republicans were involved in, in an insurrection that almost toppled our democracy. So this, what they're trying to do is pass the buck in order to gain more viewers and voters going into 2024. You have uh, both leaders, uh, Hakeem Jeffries uh, in the House, uh, Chuck Schumer in the Senate, condemning the move. Schumer says that the release of the footage would, quote, compromise the safety of the legislative branch. Uh, do you agree with that assessment? How, how do you see the safety being compromised? Uh, as somebody who was uh, in the Capitol on January 6th, who was one of the last 20 to 25 members who got evacuated by the Capitol Police, when we had insurrectionists beating on the on the gallery doors. We know that every um, 
every nook and cranny of that capital was actually a, a security advantage that we had because they didn't know where they were going. And that's what allowed us to escape and make sure that nobody um, lost their lives out of members of Congress. It didn't stop the fact that mem uh, uh, police officers lost their life. But imagine if they actually knew what they were, where they were going, what they were doing, things could have been a lot, lot worse. So yes, I'm concerned that this footage has um, information that will allow uh, insurrectionists and another January 6th to occur. And also, does that mean that um, foreign our foreign adversaries, people that want to cause us harm, um, could they use that footage? We don't know uh, yet because we don't know exactly what the contents of that footage um, entails. And that's why I'm supporting uh, Hakeem Jeffries and getting more information to ensure that the safety and security of the people in the Capitol are maintained. How desperate is Kevin McCarthy in all of this? I mean, what does it say that he is beholden to figures like Tucker Carlson and Marjorie Taylor Greene? Oh, it shows that he's uh, he's a figurehead in name only. He is might be the head, but Marjorie Taylor Greene is the neck that turns the head. It is that extreme wing of the party that is putting um, the American people in danger. And remember some of the things that she said this past week. Um, even go to the core of what it means to be the United States of America. So uh, we're in a, in a terrible place. We need to make sure that we push back and we don't allow them to change the narrative of the last couple of years. Uh, speaking of uh, Green, uh, I'm sure you saw the news this week. She is defending her push for a national divorce between blue and red states, saying the country is moving towards another civil war. Uh, I remember you pushed for Green to be stripped of her committee assignments in the last Congress. I just want your reaction to having a sitting member of Congress openly calling for the dissolution uh, uh, and dissolving of the United States of America. I find it personally um, offensive. Somebody who I believe in this country wholeheartedly, I believe in our institutions, and I believe that our differences are um, are settled at the ballot box and in the legislative and, uh, and political process, not through the dissolution of our great country. And let's remember that um, that she is not only the neck that turns the head, but she is also oftentimes at the forefront of what is being spoken and talked about in the in the dark recesses of the the extreme MAGA Republican uh, sphere. And so is she now um, somebody who spread the big lie in 2020? Is this something else that she's pushing? And I want to be very clear why this is dangerous, because the same people that believe the big lie will probably be the same people that start repeating this this dangerous, dangerous rhetoric that the that there should be a national divorce or a secession of states from the union. And that is would be a terrible, terrible mistake. Let me switch gears uh, for a moment. You recently launched the Congressional Dads Caucus to focus on policies for working families. Uh, in fact, you even brought your five-month-old son to the House floor <laughs> during that whole uh, speaker vote fiasco. I, I hope he did well there because that thing dragged on a lot longer than a lot of people had anticipated. <laughs> um, tell us about that caucus and, and what you hope to achieve for working families in this country. Yeah, the Dead's Caucus. We we just I just realized we wanted to take advantage of all the attention that um, we got because uh, that I, the fact that I brought my son to the House floor, um, I got praised for something that women would often get criticized for, uh, just taking care of their own their own child. But we can hopefully um, call attention to that double standard and then hopefully gain more. Um, uh, support for policies that support working families, everything from affordable child care to the child tax credit to paid family leave. As somebody who um, had parents that worked four to five jobs a week to make ends meet, when I got sick with pneumonia and almost bankrupted my family because my parents had to uh, miss shifts at work in order to take care of me, I know that these policies can uplift families. And if we want to talk about family values, we want to talk about supporting families across the country. These are the policies that we need to get behind. So I'm, I'm proud to be a founder of the Dad's Caucus, but we want to make sure that we actually get some real legislative wins. Some beautiful moments there. I see him already getting a taste of uh, American political life. And I'm actually, I got to say, Congressman, <laughs> I'm super impressed by the way that you were able to wrap uh, uh, that harness around it to keep him there on your chest. As, as a father, I always struggled. I didn't have the coordination to pull that off. So. <laughs> 
Well, some people actually said that I had it a little wrong on the on the footage. Oh, so really? okay, I've, well, I've learned <laughs> since then, uh, and I've done it better. So uh, I don't want you to get called out for. Uh, uh, well, he, lo he looks like he's way. enjoying himself there, <laughs> Congressman Jimmy Gomez of California. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Greatly appreciate your time. Thank you, Amen.